Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, greetings and salutations and welcome to this edition of the Women of BSV. We have the most beautiful Micah who's joined us today, he hasn't been with us for a while, so thank you Micah. We've got Ruth and me, Diddy, you all know, and today we have Kristen Ega Hansen, who is the new group CEO of Enchain, and he's a bit of a powerhouse full of enthusiasm and energy, and we are really honoured to have him and welcome to our little show, Kristen, at which we dedicate completely to the BSV ecosystem, and we're trying to empower more women to who believe in the technology to get a little bit more involved, etc., with with everything so welcome to our show and thank you very much for coming and first off let's take a bit of a deep dive into who you are and what your background is and a little bit of your history is that all right so actually i'm more curious because i find it quite so if i can say uh no i'm on woman bsv and i'm more curious about why did you start this thing because that's so rare to see you know, uh, women in this industry with passion and drive. And I think, you know, that's amazing to see that you try to recruit more people into the industry and we need that. So uh, I just want to know, uh, before I start about my background, tell me why you started this. Okay, well, that's exactly why, because there aren't enough women in this industry. <laughs> um, and there was a, there's a gentleman called Shembu Spain who yeah. has a channel called the Bitcoin SV channel. He's over in Japan at the moment. And he and his partner, Luke, are devising a platform called Blaircast, and he's a musician. And I used to work in the theatre, and I used to be a production manager, and basically we went on the show and Shem asked me to get a group of women together and there were seven of us and we've been going ever since so you are interview number 71 so and we've done an interview every Friday we've released an interview every week we do a music night every couple of months three months or so and we try and get live streams in and I go down and record as many events as I can possibly get to on my trusted little iPhone and then edit them and put them out there for people in the community that are interested who you really are on social media so that's that's and I've got I had a lot of time (laughs) available and on my hands so so that's if that helps yeah, yeah that's, 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 but I think the initiative is amazing, and I, I love, and I hope that we have more people that are actually doing exactly that, get that community up, and uh, get more people attracted to what it is. Uh, mm. Because what you see, but what I'm amazed about is that everyone that actually has the ability to see the BSV ecosystem, because that's not the easiest thing to discover. No, so, no. so, and then, then my question is, then is like, why BSV? Well, for yeah. us, for us I, I yes. say we should probably be asking you, but um, yeah, it no, makes from, sense. from it's yeah, my perspective, I was in to BTC back in like 2010. Like, I've, I've been here the whole. The whole way, basically. Oh, wow. that's and, early. Yeah, and then since about 2015, 2016, the BTC started to slow down and just get really, really full blocks, and the fees went sky high, and it all got backed up, you know, like a block toilet. And yeah. um, I just thought this is crap. And so when the fork happened with BCH, I was like, no, it's obviously big blocks is the way. And so, uh, but I didn't immediately kind of go out and go all in on BCH because I wasn't really sure about the, the the people who were needing that chain, honestly. But when I discovered Craig Wright at the at the folk for BSV, I was like, ah, oh, I've found my home. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it's a brainer really, honestly, because it's quite obvious to me and it should be obvious to everybody that without big blocks, it won't scale. Mm-hmm. And this idea of having a second layer where you're moving – in and out of Lightning Network, of course, that's going to get blocked up too. So, I mean, it's to me, it's a no-brainer. How about you, Micah? Well, um, I'm in the blockchain space since a couple of years. Uh, I actually started with the XRP community. I have to say it's a really fun community. 
Uh, but from the technology side, well, um, I was uh, discovering all sorts of uh, blockchain technologies. And back then, um, back in the days, I was <laughs> in contact with someone from the um, US government. Uh, from some sort of let's say tax department and yeah. he had some insights actually and um, he told me at some point I might forget about everything it's BSV actually <laughs> and uh, but, um, there was this delisting campaign um, mm. about that around that time and uh, for me, it was some sort of resistances to, to uh, overcome to actually look at BSV. Um, and yeah, well, I overcome, uh, overcame this, uh, these resistances and uh, found out that uh, BSV has something special, which is the, the data capacity, especially, mm -hmm. um, and uh, which was new to me. And I thought, okay, it's an it's a data um, economy coming up and the monetization of data is it's a huge thing. And uh, yeah, that's why I got into BSV. Um, I was also then uh, very much involved uh, through the Bitcoin Association. Um, I, um, since the beginning of this year, I kind of stepped back from the scene, uh, from the surface, because of uh, different happenings, which I also hope that you, Christian, um, yeah, change within this community. Yeah, so, so, uh, I, I want to hear more about that. So what type of happenings? Yes. Please. Oh, this is a, a very long story. I, I would uh, do that. Also. I mean, it's important. <laughs> this is important stuff, you know. Uh, this is very important. Um, you know, there are, there's this saying, I'm not sure how's it in English, like kind of like the, the fish starts uh, to smell from the head, you know? Yeah. And um, I, um, I really see uh, like Calvin is doing such a wonderful thing. He's really, uh, he's showing such a dedication, but there are some people underneath him, uh, surrounding him, who are doing some, let's say more rather toxic stuff. And there I was in contact with, uh, and I, uh, uh, yeah, was uh, pr promised uh, uh, several things, um, and I mean we are in a blockchain space where I I see the technology has uh, so much purity itself, yeah, yeah, but yeah. the people are not acting this way, and uh, this really needs to change. It's uh, where I really recognize it's not the technology, the, the, not technology itself is king, but community is king, and well, there yes. some of the leading stars. Uh, uh, or, or not leading stars, that's not true, but um, some of the, let's say, managing people are failing big time. And um, yeah, oh, that's so what I hope to change. So, you know, in I believe that in any organization, in any type of organization, you will have bad people, you will have good people. Uh, you should never judge an organization because I don't think there is such as a good organization or bad organization. But we will have toxic people and we have non-toxic people. We have people with energy, people with no energy. You have people that envy you because you may take space and then will try to take you away because they have all their own agenda. But there's an agenda that is above all of this. This is actually, you know, what we can do with this technology. And that's why I'm in this space is because I know uh, we can overcome the toxic people. We can overcome the, the, the haters, all the people that fight against us with different agendas. And we can overcome that. But we need to reach out and we need to include and uh, not exclude. I think this, the whole industry is all about all these tribes. And um, we can't go out there and say, you know, oh, so uh, you're part of that tribe, you know, uh, you're an idiot. Uh, that's not the right way to educate the world. Uh, because I believe that most intelligent people that would ever see or get exposed to what we do, they would understand it. And we need, to, we all have our different journey into a space where we get, wow, this is so mind blowing. It can change so many aspects. And it can impact so well in this world, like nano payments, uh, etc., in, in emerging markets and the way people do things and the way they monetize data. 
um, is really a social impact uh, uh, business we are into. And I will come back to that. But of course, there will be people that has their agenda, try to stop this, do this, do this. And um, I normally start with this, that the reason we are here, first of all, it is because of the genius of uh, Dr. Craig Wright. Yeah. I mean, uh, we have to start and acknowledge that the DNA of this is Satoshi himself, and that is Dr. Wright. And, and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my dialogue with him. Uh, I wouldn't be convinced, uh, or maybe I would have been, but it facilitated that process. So uh, I see very clearly that um, that's the number one. That's why I called my first uh, kind of uh, Twitter space for the DNA of uh, and, um, and that's the first thing. And then when you have this, you know, brilliant mind doing all these things, seeing things so many years before everyone else, I'm used to see that. And uh, if you're too early, you can still lose it all. It doesn't matter if you are uh, uh, the best technology, if people don't see it, if it don't get exposed, if you don't get the community to start using it, nothing going to happen. We need can, I, with it. Yeah? can I say thank you for doing the Twitter space? Because oh, I think you're the first person in your kind of position that's yeah. actually taken note of the community and wanted to kind of talk to the community out there especially on social media and twitter mm -hmm. to find out what they're doing and what they they are actually involved in and what they're you know what what they see from their perspective of what's going on in the ecosystem and stuff so hats off to you and grateful for you for doing that because it was extremely interesting as well i mean i think there was about 400 yeah. odd people on it was really successful i think ten thousand people know it's closely that to listen to it Really? Wow. Oh, that's so, great. Uh, we activated, it was like 650 online and 10,000 that listened, more or less 10,000 that listened to it. And I'm going to take that up to 100,000. And we're going to do so, much more. Yeah. Good for you. So just just while, you're, while we're talking about this little thing, when are you going to do them? What well, kind of time and how often? So, so that people uh, uh, I'm going to do it every second Sunday. So it's going to be next Sunday, 9 o'clock. Uh, um, and then I'm also going to create create the Twitter space for where we're going to um, actually address and um, uh, kind of letting use cases speed date for investors. Speed. Oh, wow. Oh, that's uh, a great uh, idea. Uh, because I really want... Uh, so the way I look at it is that we have this... So I want, if I can just go back. So we, if we take the DNA, Craig, and we'll come back to this. Then we have Calvin. Without Calvin, none of her would be, you know, because he's been instrumental. Mm. And I wouldn't do this if it wasn't for Calvin. I work very closely with Calvin. I work very closely with Craig. And another guy that I have to mention here is Stefan, which I think is an amazing guy. Stefan Matthews. Uh, Stephen Matthews. And uh, we kind of become a team and we want to do all the same thing. And none of us is in this for the money. Uh, we really are okay. Maybe that's an egoistic thing that you know we want to put some <laughs> kind of legacy for what we're doing. Um, oh, it's really good, it's good to hear. Yeah, uh, but that's really the passion about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's uh, and success is quite often measured that you are able to create something. And I think we are sitting on all of Silicon Valley together and we're going to make that happen. And I tell you, I will work 24 7 to make that happen. But I'm going to do it a little bit differently from what's been doing in the past. I I'm, love hearing that. I love hearing that. Carry on. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to include everyone. Yes. Uh, I, include. I'm going to include everyone. I'm not going to exclude everyone. Okay. Uh, we've been created a little bit bitterness in our community uh, because we've seen that we've never been seen. So then people get bitter, and why don't I get this support? And why don't I get this? And um, we isolated us and said, okay. And the, 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 the mechanism of that is that to defend ourselves, we kind of says, okay, but then everyone is crap. So we are the only smart ones. Uh, we are the only one that exists out there. 
instead of actually going out and be curious and look at Algorand, look at Solano, look at all these type of, you know, smart contract. And I'm not talking about crypto. I think crypto is crap. I hate crypto. Mm -hmm. I'm all into blockchain and the technology and what it can do for mm -hmm. human beings. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's what we are into. But then be curious and listen. Yeah, I can see that point. But uh, have you looked at this? And then you explain. We need to get people to want to be educated. But we kind of shut them up and on social media say, you don't get this. So, you know, kind of fuck off. Uh, and and, <laughs> and, and I interrupt for a second because I would think Xiao Wei is doing a brilliant thing of this because he's actually looking at what's going on in other chains, then replicating it and saying yeah. you can like translate all of that stuff onto BSV and I'll build it here. This tool to do and that's yeah. education. And yeah. you know what? If you're not exposed, I mean, if no one put this in front of me, I wouldn't know that this even existed because yeah. mm -hmm. it's small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's because all of you are very early adapters to see this. And we are so extremely early adapters that it's impossible for the world to see this. You go up and talk to any global CEO or Fortune 500 CEO, and you talk about uh, Bitcoin, first of all, and especially we in our community, when we say Bitcoin, we know what we, make, what we mean. Uh, BSB. Nobody else does. Yeah. <laughs> nobody else does. So, so you see people in the restaurant and you're talking about Bitcoin, they believe you're talking about, you know, the crypto bullshit, Bitcoin, BTC. Uh, so it's like communication is all about understanding how you're going to communicate. Mm. So you go up and say, yeah, I represent Bitcoin. Yeah. So what's that? Then you have to go through the whole process of the originally white paper and, you know, uh, all the journey to, you know, the BSV. And people so, cut you off. Long and you cut you off because it's like it's yeah. complicated and all yeah. that. And, so and I, preconceptions. But yes, yeah. yes. And yes. preconceptions. Yeah. And then people are starting uh, searching and looking at this, um, the fights about Satoshi. So because and, and the way I look at the world is that most people, they don't have the ability to stand up against the um, compact majority. And, and the compact majority, they always believe they are right. And, and uh, my own experience is that I always like to listen to the minority uh, because minority is always, uh, there's a reason why someone <laughs> fighting so much to kill something. Like mm -hmm. Satoshi. Yeah, 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 completely. All want to kill Satoshi. And why yeah. do you all want to kill Satoshi? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a reason. That's because... It's a threat to all the stakeholders in BTC, all the stakeholders in other environment that actually kind of see what we have. They're educated enough to understand that this actually is it's a revolutionary threat. It's yeah. the whole industry. Yeah. And, and uh, when you see that, then you suddenly become a threat. And uh, you're then going to start recruiting people from the industry. They get scared. Oh, wow, I can get trolled. And I get trolled into this. And you know what? What should I do? I, uh, it's, so not, then, it's not just trolling. There's like serious hatred and animosity at events and everywhere. Yeah. And I, 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 I never actually said a bad word on Twitter. I never pushed anyone to do this. And even if someone hate me, I may block them. And, you know, I don't want to waste my time on looking at that shit. But never, <laughs> ever go into a fight. Mm -hmm. Stand up for who you are, have the backbone, stand up, fight for it, because I know this is for humanity. Mm -hmm. mm. We are fighting yeah. for humanity. We yeah. fight for, if you look at the way we impact the world, and with the original DNA of this, nano payment, you know, what that can do. And, and the fascinating thing is that if you look at everyone, even in our industry, you look at Enchain as a company. If you go and ask them how many use cases is out there, they don't even know. Because it's so big, so vast. And we're so early. We we're barely conceiving them. And this is part of the reason as well that we do the channel, to give a voice to some of those companies and entrepreneurs that are building on the technology that haven't had, you know, been seen by people like yourselves, you know. You, you, you do an amazing job. And I actually low 
people like you doing this because this is important. And uh, not only educating everyone out there, but also let's onboard more women with creativity. We know that we have different brains mm -hmm. uh, and, and there's so many smart, smart women out there and we need their brains and skills to actually develop new solutions. You know, there is femtech, there is like all kinds of things out there that we can build around this mm. that in, you know, um, so give to our community, but we need to educate them. So yeah. thank you for doing that. I will try to do my part, but first is to actually educate the people that are actually working with this. We are sitting with the best brilliant engineers in the world, you know, researchers in the world, you know, patent, uh, we have the most amazing patent portfolio. We tap into all aspects based on the originally uh, ideas of Dr. Craig Wright. But at the same time, we have an organization that kind of uh, um, moved in to isolate themselves from the community. Do you uh, think that's part and parcel of being like bureaucratic kind of red tape that's put into corporate entities because it's difficult for entrepreneurs to kind of, you know... I'm going to change all of this just to so make sure. The, all of this is going to change. Uh, end chain is going to be completely different based on that. I don't want to have an IBM culture uh, or a blue chip culture. We are entrepreneurs. Yeah. We are fighting for something. We are out there on the outpost fighting for uh, what we believe in. And uh, disbelievers, I'm not going to accept any disbeliever in our organization. Either you believe in what we're doing or you don't believe in what we're doing. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe in what we're doing, then move on. Take another job. Don't stay here for your salary. Uh, that's not why you're going to be here. You're going to be here because you strongly believe in how we can actually do great things for companies. And that is not only, you know, that is for enterprise solutions, it's for government solutions, uh, cut, uh, crypto shit. The only solution that really scale when it comes to central bank digital currency, that is uh, our technology. And nano transaction, that's based on our technology. Yeah. Um, so when you first time download, you know, your hand cash app or send B or another app in our ecosystem, uh, not to promote one, uh, you know, one of them. I don't, I mean, not All right, we love hand cash. We love Alex. I, yeah. I love Alex and I love hand cash and I use hand cash myself. Yeah. Uh, uh, so this so, is another thing about you as well, because you are actually using all of the apps that are out there. You're actually yeah. put on Twitch and everything else as well, aren't you? So you're trying everything. Because if you don't do it, how the hell should I be a leader and talk about what we do? Right. Mm. How can I actually get an authority as a voice in this ecosystem if I don't use what is created by these amazing people out there? Yeah. It's impossible. And so there are some phenomenal minds, like you say, as well. I mean, Josh Petty, I, you know, he is a phenomenal mind. So really, at the end of the day, for him, scratching the first place and coming up with the idea. So hats off to you, Josh, as well. So, Yeah, I, I never met so many interesting characters. And quite early, when you're early adapter to something, um, it's unique. You see all these brains, and I love brains. That's my passion. And... and, and um, Brains put together that actually can collaborate and create something and also be creative because you need cross skill set. That's how I started my journey with uh, Craig. I started yeah. the journey by talking about cross skill set. Now, did you, am I right in thinking, because I've always had, this idea of that we should have a racehorse called Satoshi's vision. Am I right in thinking that you seriously that you met I love it. I love it. actually? Oh no, I, I like I've got shares in free racehorses. Um, I, I love horse riding. I love horses. I like. I mean, you know, they're very small shares as well. It's not a load. But please, can we have a horse called Satoshi's vision? <laughs> That's a project we're going to work on. Yeah. Uh, next, next, next ascot. Uh, we have great. it on video. We we can is, it. is that where you met Craig? Was it? Yes, yes, was yes. it when he was in the royal box at Ascot? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So oh, tell us about that story. I'm really intrigued. We were on the Black uh, Amex event. Yes. 
Yeah. It finally paid off then, him going and sitting in those royal boxes and things. <laughs> so, yeah, so what was that first conversation then? Hi, I'm Satoshi. <laughs> no, actually, I, I was looking around and I tried to be very open-minded towards people. But um, people in um, my environment, uh, sorry to say, is quite boring. Uh, and <laughs> no, no, I'm talking about the environment of uh, the rich and unhappy people. Uh, I'm talking about the superficial people that uh, believe that they are more than anyone else. So we go pompous. to what? Pompous. Yes. Yeah, there's so, a lot of pompous Brits to be fair. Uh, uh, <laughs> and and paraphernalia okay. can be quite, quite I kind of in, in the Mayfair world, I'm very much part of that world. And I don't mind being it, but reality is that real people uh, uh, you meet um, other places quite often. There, you know, you will find them here too. Uh, but you go to an event like there, where there is like um, there is people that are stiff, that believe they are more than others. They have uh, more money, and they think they are. Oh, I'm sniffy. This, that, that. I kind of it doesn't impress me so much. They are unhappy. They have no passion, and the only thing they're looking for is like, oh, let's have a buy a new, you know, bag or, uh, you know, uh, a new horse. Yeah, uh, uh, that has no that's, that has no meaning. So they have very quite quite often, not always, not very much purpose in their life, and their life becomes superficial. And then you know, it's nice to go shopping one day, but you know. It's boring the day after, so you start doing it again and again and again and again. But you don't you don't create content in here because it's all about how you mentally stimulate yourself. Yeah. Uh, um, so looking around the table with these type of people normally will be like, okay, it's a little bit boring, and, then, you know, and you try a little bit, but then suddenly, oh, great, okay, and we started talking. And we talked for four hours uh, nonstop uh, about... Um, Cross skill set, which is what I'm interested in, you know, it's not good enough to be a computer scientist if you don't understand finance uh, yeah. or legal or, oh, you know, you yeah. have a creative mind or you understand human behavior or you're deep into social uh, psychology. So he's the <laughs> ultimate renaissance man. Isn't he? <laughs> yeah, so suddenly what I didn't expect was that because I always think I'm quite good at this mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I'm good at combining different type of talents. So suddenly I'm sitting with this man that, you know, are, you know, quite superior on this. <laughs> and and uh, I started to realize that, you know, yeah, I, I thought I was pretty smart, but uh, he's Country like, he's just, he, he, he's, he's span with from theology to, you know, yeah. computer science to, and he's and yeah. And it's like, okay. I always think I ruled those conversations. I kind of <laughs> felt that, yeah, interesting. He has, um, he has aspect that I don't have. So then he said, you know, um, I'm um, Satoshi. <laughs> At what point in the conversation did he bring up Satoshi or Bitcoin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. What, how uh, early in the conversation? Well, actually, the way he said it, no, we, we talked about cross skill set and then we start talking, yeah, so what, then I talked about like, what I'm doing, investing in, et cetera, et cetera. And that's a quite broad range of things. And then he said, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm the inventor of Bitcoin. Um, and of course, I <laughs> Satoshi. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, he, he's, so when he says I'm an inventor of Bitcoin, he's actually right because he invented mm -hmm. both of them. Uh, <laughs> the original one, but you know, it's it's kind of yeah, both. So, um, he is uh, so suddenly I recognized him, I saw that. Oh, All right, okay. this yeah. is uh, Dr. Craig, right? So, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, you see that genius in him as well, don't you? It's like there's a little glow yeah. there as well. It's like this yeah. cheap little yeah. Yeah. the fact is that he's charming, yeah, he is charming. You know, he has that brain. And that's going super fast. And he combined it with all kinds of things. But then you see this 17-year-old child smile. And, you know, he's inspiring to him. And, and uh, that's why when you see him on the scene, when he actually talks uninterrupted, he's, like, amazing. Uh, he has the ability to get, you know, the message across. 
And then you 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 start talking about problem solution in this, but you can do A, B, C, D. And then there's a solution. You know, what I just saw, and I know the debate about Satoshi, there's no one else than him, that type of personality that yeah. can be Satoshi. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, we continued the conversation for two hours. Um, we never saw we never saw Bitcoin uh, horse win uh, because we never saw a horse race. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we left without having having a look actually. Um, so um, then I invited to me him to my office. I thought it was like you know that was interesting. So uh, we had another six hours or whatever, and then you know I continued and we had some dinners and blah 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 blah. But the first thing he actually did after our first meeting was that um, he created the, so that was the 15th of, 15th of June uh, this year okay. and 17th of June he actually uh, created a group um, uh, a WhatsApp group and uh, he included another person which was Stefan Matches okay. uh, and the group was called uh, World Domination uh, <laughs> Okay, thank you very and, 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 and again, for the wrong people to judge world domination is uh, very easy to misinterpret, which most people do when you talk your mind, but people are not able to interpret what he says. Mm -hmm. So world mm -hmm. domination for me was not world domination what it is for another audience, uh, uh, because it's all about what he really meant by it was that, and he said, I think we have some uh, thing in common. And when he says that, that is like humanity. It's about changing the world, you know, non-payment, the unbanked people, change the way we're doing things, one global public ledger, you know, all yep. those things that in other people's mind, and that's why it's so misinterpreted, will yeah. be yes. like... World domination is not yeah. It's yeah. not world domination. It's actually doing the better thing. It's actually saving the world from poverty. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 you know, I mean, I, I always see because I did, I mean, I worked in many things myself, but finance is one of them. And I always saw the nano payments and micro payments was something that would actually help the third world. So people who live on $2 a day would be able to hopefully be able to trade and do peer to peer transactions yeah. with each other to be able to get themselves out of that kind of poverty, because at least there is something there available for them to to use and try. Yeah. It's economic opportunity at their fingertips. That's how I always yeah. describe it. And, and, and you're so right. And you get it. But how many people get that? So when you get the text, uh, so for anyone else, they will, you know, if someone wants to troll that's like, oh, he's about world domination. He's not at all. He's no. about humanity, making life that's better. And yeah, saving about, the world from oh, domination. Saving the world. For as many people as possible. And mm. all the inefficiency and intermediates that we have, which is pure yeah. bullshit. Yeah, and I, I'm interested actually. Sorry to cut you short because you're saying about sorry. efficiency, but you said you spoke to the, the governments and stuff. Now, I I would like to see inefficiency in government disappear and then start to be efficient. And I see BSV as a way of being able to help them be more efficient. The same with the NHS and the tax office and all of this. So, what are those conversations? Are we? Can we delve into any of those? No, no, no. So, of course, this is uh, education, and 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 um, you have to educate those enterprises. Mm. And the way we have educated those enterprises up to now is that the community around they try to suppress us to not be able to reach out. So saying, "Oh, he's a fake. He's this. He's that." Mm -hmm. So instead of actually, so we never established really those. Connection, we have it. So when he goes certain places, he's like, God. The, the attacks have worked very well. Yeah. What? The attacks the against him have worked very well. Yeah. So, but, and you know, this is about the counting software. It's like, you know, mm. you do that, uh, uh, you, you, you do it with government that actually can print their own, no print, they don't need to print the money. They don't even need, you know, uh, intermediates in this. Uh, it's like, I'm coming from the telecom industry, and we built three, four different infrastructure 
that kind of competing with us. Is that good for humanity? What you want to do is the most efficient operator on that uh, uh, infrastructure. And that infrastructure should be state owned. It should not be owned by, you know, private company mm. owning uh, hundreds of 5G networks and they're working in competition with each other. What you do is that you, like you do roads, you want to make the road, the most efficient road. You don't put in five motorways uh, and then which one do you want to use? So this is branded this way, this is branded this way. What you do is that you make the best motorway, most secure and scalable, and then you let operator operate them. Mm -hmm. And the most efficient operator, he will get the most clients. Simple mm -hmm. as that. That's all you create. Infrastructure, I think, is a government thing. So when people are challenging currency uh, or crypto and things that Bitcoin, no, I'm not talking about Bitcoin, I'm talking about B2C, is actually going to be the new uh, currency, that's complete bullshit. Yeah. This is going to be central bank, uh, government uh, currency. You know, we're not going to interfere with that. We're not into the crypto world at all. We're into the smart contract world, we're into the blockchain. But most of all, the core of BSV is peer-to-peer -peer yeah. and nano payment. Yeah. Uh, and on top of that, with different layers, we build our central bank digital currency solutions because we are the only one that can scale the number of transactions. And we want to give that to the hands of the government for them to have an opportunity and of course, in every single emerging market, they need this because they need efficiency. They're not going to go through printing money. The cost of all of that, you know, uh, is so cost efficient. Mm -hmm. And it's a long-term project. And mm -hmm. emerging market get it. Like they always get it. They're faster adopter than any other place in the world. We in, in our Western countries, we are slow. We are slow adopters uh, because you go to the Philippines, you know, they have 130 million people with a mobile phone. Uh, they don't need anything else. Uh, yeah. uh, they can be straight onto the infrastructure. They can have a straight communication line with the government solution as a central bank digital currency. And the bank can decide if they want banks or they don't want banks. Uh, but that's their decision. And we're not going to interfere in those decisions. What do you think are the chances of the British government listening to Enchain, having an audience with Enchain, you know, um, starting you to consider this as an option. I mean, I'm going to guarantee you that <laughs> we will talk to every single government and educate them about this. Now, I know Craig's yeah. already spoke to the House of Lords in yeah. London. So, yeah. um, but obviously we've got tough competition because you've got Rishi, who is the prime minister, who has his own, you know, system kind of infosys oh, yeah which is kind of rival to to bsv in a sense i actually, don't, I actually don't think we have any rival no nah, we so, don't uh, okay, it, it, it's but, like it, the position of power is in yeah it, yeah his position of power but his system can't do it it can't scale it's not efficient it's not it's don't, inexpensive it can't scale they can't scale yeah. and we have patent on scaling that's uh, nice uh, so, yeah. so I, no, they can't scale. And first of all, I respect him too much to believe that he should abuse his power for not something that is not good for uh, um, the country. His society. Uh, that he's, yeah. Anyone that's working on that role, uh, we've seen different people doing it and we've seen people abusing it. I don't think he's one of them. Uh, and I have that trust that he actually, you know, will not abuse his power for something that is much better. And uh, we have contacts and uh, we will pull those strings to educate them. They mm -hmm. have to take their decisions. But if we're not there to educate them, it will never happen. That's right. And we need to look at it from that perspective. We don't sell. We educate. Educate. Yeah, absolutely. It's, very yeah. it's a different, yeah. different aspects completely so what about the good the bad and the ugly of cbdc's what? yeah well <laughs> of course denny's gonna go into that side of the conversation <laughs> <laughs> the good the bad and the ugly you know of cbdc there is good and there is bad and there's a bit of the ugly on there so, you you just talk about new world order. so if they're cutting out the banks and then and then you have an account with the central bank now 
an individual does and they decide to switch off your account, which is the kind of thing they've been doing in Canada recently when people were attending and protests and they didn't like it and stuff. And China. We, we don't China. really want that kind of CBDC, do we? How do also, we prevent that from happening? Mm. So I think that you will see the bank has a uh, future in this too. It's just that they need to be much more efficient, much more transparent. And uh, uh, that's what I actually talk about when I talk about these things. I mean, different government will adapt it differently. I mean, if you go to Argentina with their high inflation, you know, no one will accept the government solution uh, and they will create, you know, just these alternative economies uh, outside. So you need to be careful when you implement these things. Uh, it's a strong instrument. It's also a way of controlling your audience because you can, you, if you put it this way, you had one con account and the government is controlling this account, then suddenly... Uh, You're an it's, enemy it's, of the state and you... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then public opinion against it. So it's, 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 it's a transition. Uh, so that is one part of it. But it doesn't really fascinate me as much as P2P transactions on, on, on the level of the unbanked and all the people that is fighting for survival in this world. We have 2 billion people unbanked. They still have a mobile phone, but uh, they're still unbanked. And, and uh, to help on those things and creating those infrastructures, that means for them our ability to do microtransactions yeah. and also to be able to you know, pass on money through different jurisdiction without having people cutting off 30% of, of, of what they're sending. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's important. So the way I look at what we all together here represent is that it's a big social impact movement. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's packaged in different solutions, but it's a big social impact uh, movement uh, where we're fighting for the truth, we're fighting for the transparency, we're fighting for those things that is important for a better society. I want to tokenize every single bit of this world. I want to see H&M the need to disclose how much clothes they burn for before they're actually sending out uh, the new collection. Because mm. I want that trace from everything from potential child labor through the whole value chain and how it ends up in your home. And when we have that on the chain, uh, very simple, we will have a much more transparent world. Yeah, and same with food, I suppose, as well. For example, with the, with the egg situation in the UK at the moment, the yeah. supermarkets aren't prepared to pay the farmers uh, enough to cover the feed for the, the, the birds, for the eggs. So, But in the media, it says there's an egg shortage, but there isn't an egg shortage because the farmers are on YouTube saying we have hundreds and thousands of eggs, but the supermarkets won't pay us that extra couple of pence to cover for the price of the feed because of the fuel that's gone up. So this is where you're coming from in that I, respect. I, I'm, I'm precisely. And what we do then is that we use public opinion. Yeah, <laughs> you call it a public opinion. And, and the interesting thing, by having solutions and delivering solutions and empowering people, we can activate public opinion against this. Because this is also educating the people that it is possible to get eggs. It is possible to do this because we have the solution. We can follow it. It's like, you know, we have a company uh, within the group uh, called Unisot. Uh, you may have heard about it. Yeah, we know. Uh, uh, amazing, amazing person. Amazing yeah. person, yeah. And, 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 and uh, they created, you know, the solution for supply chains. And just like when you, 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 you just follow it from, you know, its origin to it end up on your plate as a sashimi uh, in, a, in a fancy restaurant in, in uh, London. But mm. you, you just follow the route and then you're wondering, why did that go from Norway to Madrid and then back up via France yeah, yeah. to, uh, to uh, uh, um, Sweden and to London? You know, mm. this is like, you know, uh, the carbon footprint of this world. So everything we do and fight for here is really connected really? to social yeah. impact mm -hmm. and uh, the, the ESG level uh, or rating on companies. So if you take and look at the ESG score on the Fortune 2000 companies, uh, let's take LVMH. I think they're 
ESG score is 7.8. So when we go and sell this, you tell them, why don't you increase that? Mm -hmm. uh, so how can I increase that? Yeah, but by putting all your product on the blockchain, uh, by being transparent, mm -hmm. by showing what you do with what you're not using, mm -hmm. and uh, showing people, because it's there, public, that how you dealt with, you know, your whole, all the fashion product, the whole reuse market. Think about the reuse market that you have uh, when you have all these products, but they're on the blockchain, they're verified. It's not a China product. It, you can check it. You can have it with an NFT certificate because it is connected to the blockchain and you follow it through. And suddenly you have a reuse market. You know the origin. You know when it was bought new. It, you know it was sold, et cetera, et cetera. Same with watches. You know, why should we have a watch like this and have all the criminals in London wanting to steal them? If it was on the blockchain, it would be irrelevant to steal them because they're worth zero. Mm -hmm. So everything we do and fight for here is actually doing good. Yeah. Now, you actually remind me of Dr. Thomas Stockman from The Enemy of the People. And I understand that this is one of your favorite plays as well by Henrik Gibson, uh, Ibsen, who is uh, a Norwegian playwright. I think it was 1882 or something that the play That's was written. Absolutely correct. Yes. But I, it was one of, like, I, I say, so I worked in the theater. I, I worked on Enemy of the People, and it was one of my favorite plays as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was a long time ago. But I, I understand. Should... Yeah. Now, why it's your favorite play? Because yeah. you are kind of like Dr. Thomas Stockman. What's the, what's the plot of it, Diddy? I have no idea. Well, let Kristen, because it is his favorite play. Oh, it's, it's, so it, it's, it's a plot that actually is all about the compact majority. And actually, I recommend everyone to read it. Mm -hmm. And it's this, you know, um, village that is completely dependent on their... Um, their swimming pool, really, uh, uh, like the center to connect everyone, and is bringing the society alive and having you know uh, everyone um, needs it kind of for having the community to work. Mm -hmm. But then someone comes up and said it's poisoned, mm. and because someone says the truth, they quiet them down mm. because people don't like the truth. No, they really don't. Exactly what's been happening. Yeah, we know that. And then why you push them down so much that the compound priority, because they all have their agenda, but that will affect this, this will, this will affect this, this will affect this. So we need to get them to sh shut up. <laughs> and when a bit like social media? What? A bit like cancel, cult cancel yeah. culture on social media? Yes, yes. But you know, I think we pushed through that play. What? We have lived through that play over the last few years. Yeah, exactly. It's so it makes so much sense to me why you are where you are. And, you, you know, the fact that that is one of your favorite plays. I mean, yeah. I saw a modernized version uh, of this play in Stockholm uh, five, six years ago. And you said it was, this is from 1882. Mm, and it's yeah. completely relevant today. Uh, yeah, that play, they actually that was integrated into the modern society with social media and all of it, and that's why I would see more of these plays because this is how the world work. When yeah. someone genius like Craig go up there, tell the truth, they want to quiet him. Yeah, and it's so complicated yeah. to stand behind someone when everyone is saying. He's bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is because it affects us. It affects our families. It affects everybody behind him. And we get scared. And then when we get scared off, we shy off. Yeah. And, uh, Not yeah. us. Not us. Well, Not each us. That's, why I, that's why I'm talking to you. Yeah, uh, each each one of us has experienced that ourselves, and I think, and I don't want to do the poor women thing, but because we are women, it is very easy to shut us up or try to shut us up, and then our voices get louder, and then we're told to shut up again, and then they get louder and louder, and then we're kind of, well, you're a bit crazy, aren't you? And it's like, I am going to make you listen to me. I am going to tell you the truth, and I am going to get that truth out there, okay. and. So, 
that I believe that when you do that, I believe in being proud. And when everyone else tells that you are an idiot, uh, you get prouder, mm -hmm. you get stronger. And you know, you know, the play ends. The strongest man on earth is the one that stands alone. Mm. Yeah, fair enough. And and sometimes that is just reality, because when it comes to this, you know, people take the easy way, and we none of us here take the easy way. No, no. This is not the easy way. If we no, took the easy way. We no, go no, we're not. In the direction. I don't like the easy way because I know the easy way is always wrong. Exactly. Yeah. And and when you believe in something, you fight for something. I feel energized mm -hmm. and I want to walk down the street. Even if people hate me, I don't mind people hating me. <laughs> they can go and hate me as much as they like and they can troll me and they can do this and can do that. But you need people with backbone and people yep. don't have backbone. That's not something which is normal. Doing what you do needs backbone. But people in general terms have zero backbone because as a group dynamic, they are just floating wherever they are. That's what yeah. I call the jellyfish of this world. Anything for a quiet life. Yeah, I know. We, I think we've seen more of that over the last three years than the rest of my life put together. Yeah, but at the same time, if you think about it, and I had this, you know, when I talk to people within the N-Chain group and the community, etc. you know, the best way to take those hits, like, don't, don't need you. Don't hit back. Just let them try to beat the shit out of you. You know, Kristen, I think we've been doing that recently. Like, <laughs> we stopped reacting. I've stopped reaching out to the rest of the community. I've stopped trying to have arguments. Like, just like, just but in, in a weird sort of way, we've gone too quiet. Okay, but we're going to change that. So, yeah. so we'll work together. We work. We re recharging here. So we're going to work together on doing this. What I believe is that we need to change the narrative. And because people are quite simple-minded in general terms, it means we need to educate them. But when we go there and go and act exactly like they are acting against us, we're just doing the same thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. just you've lost your audience. That is poisoning us. Yep. And I don't want that. I don't want to go just because you said that, yeah, but you are a shit, or oh, fuck you, or you know, uh, with all the stupid language which is used on Twitter. It's like because people are, you know, locked behind the screen and, and uh, uh, they think they can write anything. They're very bold behind the screen. Yeah, they're We're very bold behind face. the screen. Sit face to face, they're not so bold. Yeah. And and I, I and it's so easy because they may have a certain agenda or whatever. So if you have a pure agenda and you 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 know what you're doing and why you're doing it, you don't mind being hated. Mm -hmm. And, and because you know you're doing the right thing. And if you then pass away doing that journey, you do it with I a smile. Mean, you yeah. do it with a smile. That's right. That's and, good advice. Because uh, having boundaries means sacrifice, always means sacrifice. Yeah, it is sacrificing, but you know, the feeling of doing what you believe in. I will never, ever do things I don't believe in. I'm happy to fail. That happened to us, all of us, and we will fail, and we will fail. But if you haven't failed, you haven't tried enough. That's right. Never, mm -hmm. ever compromise your beliefs. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, and, if you that notice, and that's the most, one of the most amazing things I feel with Craig is that despite all these hits, he knows, and I understand his frustration, because he knows he's right. And he sees that people don't get it, get it frustrated about it, understand the anger you get out of there. And he never compromises. He never compromises. Never compromises. <laughs> because he's always right. And he yeah, is he's right. And that's the thing. He doesn't just think he is right. He actually is right. He's and that's right. what people need but to start the way to, we need, but trust. The way we need to help him and, and to actually not kill this movement, but to expand the movement is not reacting that way. Mm -hmm. We need to have a different reaction pattern. For him, it's a natural reaction pattern and it works for him. But for everyone around him, we need to have the opposite reaction pattern. 
Yeah. I want us, for every hit we get, we smile. So that reminds me of um, a song by a Norwegian band called Aha, <laughs> called Take yeah. On Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that where we're going, Denise? Is that where we're going? <laughs> well, why not? Let's Let's talk it, about it, 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 her in Norway before she got on the Aha. No, no, completely. Yeah. I mean, there's a commonality here, isn't there? Christian's yeah. from Nor Norway, you know, Aha, a Norwegian. Michael is an amazing musician, but we can tokenize music on the blockchain. Oh, we will do. Yeah. yeah. You know, so like, and I, you, we, we, as you asked about, you know, how did we happen? We happened because of Satoshi and Shembu Spain. And Shembu Spain is building a music platform called Blaircast. And yeah. there are two guys from the Block Dojo, the very first cohort. Oh, um, okay. Polish guys who are building Soundoshi. And these are platforms that are really innovative and groundbreaking technology to actually go out there and fight this huge music industry so that musicians can be paid peer to peer. Um, you know, I mean, that's the people that they're going against is, is again, it's a massive the industries that they're going against. Industry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but it's phenomenal and groundbreaking and it's such a wonderful thing. So, you know, I, I really want to know your take on on tokenizing music, you know, turning music so, into an so, not, not, so when it comes to music or movies or I believe in so. What I want to do is get rid of all the bullshit intermediates. It means everyone that is taking away the money from the creators. Yeah, the from the artists. Great. So you need to have an efficient way. So content creators have an efficient channel to the market. Mm. And uh, can be peer-to-peer -peer without being abused by all these middlemen that put themselves in position where they are filtering based on their own uh, and taking a very unfair shares, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, like, I mean, art galleries don't they take like fifty percent of the artist's work? I mean, like, if it's a an acting agent, it's about twenty twenty five percent. If it's music, it's probably more than that as well. It's probably about fifty percent as well. Sometimes, oh, it's way more. But, like, yeah, I mean, if you're putting art onto products for example you as the artist are only probably getting 10 percent, but it's your artwork that's out there so well, you know this is something that can empower artists by oh, giving no. them it, it, it not only can it will i mean all this is going to happen it's same in the movie industry I mean, look at the closed ecosystem that they're going to die you know this is dinosaurs google is a dinosaur yeah. they're not relevant anymore uh, because we are going from the open world or web where SEO matters uh, to it doesn't matter because it's going to be gated communities. Uh, we're going to we're going and see Apple where take control of thirty percent. You can't launch an app without them skimming oh, yeah. off thirty yeah. percent. Uh, and uh, yeah. I, again, I it's a huge cut. It's a market abuse game. Yeah, and also they get the say of whether or not you can be on their app store. Yeah, correct. And to decide if you are good or not good or, all, you know, all of these yeah. things. So so um, I believe that in the music industry, I think that the, what lack in our ecosystem, which we are changing. Uh, so one thing is getting the creator onto a platform. Then it's all about how do you hit the market? Uh, and, 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 and that is how do you take it from actually you are on that platform and you become relevant because mm. you can have touch points uh, towards the market uh, because they already are the audience there. So I don't believe in Google Ads. I don't believe in Facebook or Instagram, all the bullshit marketing games. That's just wrong. And in uh, the whole group, we are actually in control of a go-to-market strategy. Uh, for uh, uh, B2C. Uh, and uh, I think that's a very, very important part to offer everyone that has, you know, a unique things like we are now pushing a hand cash uh, and we integrate it uh, in an ecosystem we uh, control. we integrating all BSV, um, exciting BSV, quality assured products, um, uh, as a marketplace. And we expose them to those people uh, as part of our offering. And that's what we can give entrepreneurs that actually have created something, 
because they get irrelevant because they may get some seed financing, but then they have no marketing budget. And then they believe they need to use the traditional way of getting to the market. So the go-to-market strategy is something I'm going to work very, very, very much with the, the community to help make some use cases really getting it there. And then suddenly you just expand and expand and expand that way. So, so um, uh, you will see a lot of that. We will offer you know, uh, the community and the use cases out there that has something to offer, a marketplace where there is an audience that are willing to download your product uh, and start using it. And that's a very, very important part of our uh, overall strategy. Yeah, and like you said, I mean, for indie bands, it's a very powerful, powerful way of actually, you know, getting Just involved. Taking music from day one. Like yeah. The first yeah. That, Kristen, that's the very thing that we've been missing for so long. When when Kurt was going to open, or when he discussed opening the Citadel here in South Florida, that's one of the reasons I got so excited. I was like, we, and I've been saying this for years, we have brilliant engineers. We have brilliant entrepreneurs. We have brilliant developers. But we don't have so much business acumen, right? And so when he was opening the Citadel, like I was really pushing like the incubator, the accelerator aspects of it, right? Because it is how do you go to market? How do you get your product out there and get adoption and then and continue to grow the marketplace? And, and that's, I think, really what we've been lacking so severely. While we have these brilliant people, you're not brilliant at everything, right? Okay. So what, what, that's what the I ghost. Want, so, so, what, so what I want to do is that... Um, I want to bring the community much closer to uh, the original DNA. That's why yeah. DNA of BSV. So um, I want to create a tech hub uh, and I want to start with London. I want to actually take in. So you go to the end chain office, it's like a corporate uh, office. It's yeah. like, uh, you know, uh, for me, it's like walking into a dead office, mm -hmm. to be honest. A bit dry. Uh, no, it's just like walking to a dead office. Where is the energy? You know, and you need to stimulate that. And we need to give it to each other. Energy is something that you you get by giving. Mm -hmm. I believe in giving. That's the only way to get. And and uh, you don't deserve if you don't give. So so the way I want to do that, I want to create the coolest tech hub in London. Uh, we create 38% on every unicorn uh, in Europe. It's created in UK. Uh, what, what was the number? 38%. 38% is created in wow. actually London, most of, the, most of them. So it means that we are so relevant in the tech space. I mean, compared with Europe, you go to Germany, they really don't produce anything. Spain, you know, <laughs> France, seriously, that's just facts. Because they don't have that environment, we actually have a tech environment. So what I want to do is uh, I want to mix the BSV community uh, uh, which I talk then, when I say that, I mean the use cases, uh, which is like more than 1,000, if you calculate all startups and everything that is tried to create it on this, um, with, you know, the brilliance uh, and the brilliant minds we have in Enchain. Um, uh, and, and when you bring this together, uh, so if you can imagine yourself this, you, so we do all these conferences. We spend millions of dollars on conferences here and there. Mm -hmm. And a conference, yes. For the gambling industry, yes, maybe. Uh, but really, what we do is we are preaching to those that's already... Yeah, yeah. 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 You don't get the new blood. I mean, why should we all go and have a conference and having 250 people and we all know them? Yeah, I... Been screaming that from the yeah. rooftop for a very yeah. long time. So, so, what I want to do is that I want kind of, if you could imagine this, I want this raw space. I want the factory. Um, we are infrastructure of this world. And I was an internet pioneer. We was infrastructure at that time. This is infrastructure for a new world. So, if you look at, you know, it, like in kind of a factory. Uh, with railways in it, uh, uh, with a graffiti wall, with all our use cases, uh, where you have a stage scene where people can come and pitch, where you have a, oh, brilliant. Where you have a bar, where you have an environment, where you have a flipper machine, where you have to use hand cash 
to do uh, and pay with nano cash, not for the money, but mm -hmm. proof of concept, where you have uh, FYX gaming in, in the other center, where you showcase all we're doing. We create that creative environment that is a little bit fucked up in a good way, but you are sharing my startup, the startup mentality. Basically. Because we need to take us out of that old box and sitting in a boring suit and I'm going to be there rock and roll and doing this and I don't understand the culture. Mm -hmm. We need to mix culture. You know, you will have old people that love this and you will have young people that love it. You will have young people that don't get it and you will <laughs> have old people that don't get it. You need to mix all this into one and create culture around it mm -hmm. and cult around it. That's why you spread it. So you have this... You can have moments. You have your <laughs> studio. you have your yeah. your your um, uh, TV studio there, and you create that environment where every you know minister will come in and say, "Look at our tech up here. This is like this is it's buzzing, yeah, yeah. It's buzzing, and it is the infrastructure or the future of this world." Yeah, yeah. How can I just um, how are we going to kind of preserve? Um, say heritage as well because that's something I I like kind of value quite a lot and you're saying about you know the old world meeting the new but kind of you know say historical heritage sites and places like that you know these are places I want to see kind of you know using the technology to be able to fund themselves and to be able to preserve the heritage of the country um you know and the same with like theater i would love to see some kind of thing at shakespeare's globe where the metaverse meets shakespeare yeah. you know but you know this technology we have it all i mean this is the best way to preserve the world it's like, I don't know how much you've been in the metaverse or if you've been to a board meeting in the metaverse or you've been to a gallery <laughs> in the metaverse. Well, I know you... nobody's got legs in the what? metaverse. At the moment. <laughs> nobody's got any legs in the metaverse at the moment. I've been to art yes. galleries in the metaverse. I'm not well, have you had sex in the metaverse? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, no. I'm just like, you know, you, you, you have to, you know, you try these things out. You need to be curious. If you're going to be in... in an inventor, or you're going to create things. You need to have curiosity. And, you know, the industries that start, you know, these things is gambling and is actually the sex industry. They're quite creative using technology. They always was. They mm. were in the forefront. Money. So going back, I remember when we started the internet. That's right. Was arriving uh, uh, into our office when we built internet, we built the infrastructure, was the porn industry. Mm -hmm. That's uh, right. Uh, and, and that's, money, isn't it? Yeah. We, 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 we can have opinions about it and we can shy out and say it doesn't exist, but it exists. And, mm. and, and, and um, we can deal with that many, many ways. But we need to be innovative. We need to be a, be a creative hub where, and we need to, I agree with you, we have the best instrument to preserve duplicate cities, uh, you know, the old world and move it into the new. And not only for that, because they can monetize the new world and preserve the old. Yeah. So you're actually yeah. building the metaverse, you make people to fund you in the metaverse because it become cooler and everyone can access it from everywhere in the world and you can yeah. preserve the real things. And when you go to the real places as well, for example, I went to a castle a couple of months ago, Tamworth Castle, and they've got AR and VR, augmented reality, as you're walking around the castle, which is awesome because you have knights of old who are there right in front of you on your augmented reality little app, which you're walking around the castle with. So those things I really want to see more of to bring the new, you know, the new generation into this this historical I agree with you. Educate people on that history. I believe in history is a very important part of us. And that's why I get so sad when I go to cities like Paris and I mm. see that the city is so wear down compared mm. with London that actually because we've been upgraded, we are developing it and we are preserving things so much better. But they don't have the money. So it's just like it gets wear down. An amazing city that is just not preserved because they mm. don't know how to do it. Because they have no innovation power. So uh, what I love about London is that this is the number one place in the world. Do you know why? Why? Because 
We are open for all sorts of people. We don't judge. We include everyone. I don't care if you're coming from A, B, C, D. The opposite. I'm curious. Oh, wow. Oh, exciting. Where are you from? <laughs> Tell me the background. You know, you're gay, you're lesbian, you're whatever. You know, you are open-minded. That open-minded that you don't find in most cities. I think it's, it's the English mindset, to be honest, or British mindset. We're just very tolerant people, I think. We just, you know, accept you know, you have to be curious. some people as they are. You have to be we curious. It's out. a sign of intelligence. You yeah, learn. we did go out and explore the world, you know, from a very early yeah. beginning, really, I suppose, and, and take our culture over to different countries and tell them to come back and come and visit us and come and see us because we can embrace your culture within our culture. Yeah, and but that is the coolest thing because then suddenly, like, wow, you learn something. I learn something every single day. Same here, eternal <laughs> student. And I'm so <laughs> excited. Every time I go up from bed, I'm super excited. Uh, you know, and like every impression is, you know, oh, wow, that's the thing and that's the thing. And from everyone, from everywhere in the world, I don't even need to travel to meet those people. Uh, and if I would, they so come to you. <laughs> Kristen, yeah. we're doing Web3 right now because, you know, we're communicating, we're together in the same virtual room right now. And, uh, you we know, are. But if that was, no, let's say we had this in the metaverse world, which no, for instance, Triller is launching. When they're launching their TikTok, uh, well, they're going public now. And you go into some of their uh, um, uh, metaverse spaces. And you're going to have an event. You're going to meet people. You can then experiment it. Maybe I want to be a little cooler than sitting in a boring jacket. And, you know, uh, you can do all of that. Mm -hmm. And you're still, because people will judge you based on who you are and what you have in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I always, there's one question I always, doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. And I always ask. And that is very simple. When did you have a mental orgasm last time? <laughs> because well, it's the most I mean, important question no, I, to ask. No, I, I, I can relate to that because I, I do I have a very rich inner mental life and I learn every day and I'm excited by what I read every day and I'm not <laughs> talking about this it. You know, so Ruth's was today <laughs> yeah, my, my life is orgasmic permanently really because it is. It is. every day is, is fantastically exciting to me but, 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 well, but, 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 but there's nothing as yeah. cool as a brain. There's yeah. nothing as sexy as a brain. Yeah. And the brain is amazing because it's a universe. And the universe or the brain, you dive into that universe, you start exploring. What people stop doing is starting exploring each other because you stop diving into that brain. If you're going to dive into a brain, so people are so superficial. The only thing they're thinking about, oh, do I have the right stuff? Do I write blah, blah, blah? And you know what? It's good to, you know, be nicely dressed and have that and all that. But how exciting it is. It gets boring straight away. The only way to actually have a real life is having the curiosity to dive in to someone else's brain. Yeah. And when you do that, you discover things that you, and you can unlock things, which is amazing. Mm. Mm. And that's why... I fell in love with Craig. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we can all agree with that. Yeah. But we've all fallen in love with Craig. Yeah. Mental stimulation. But, yeah. but, 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 but again, it's a mental stimulation. It's mm. actually, and when you package all of that, and you actually know that by doing what we're doing, we actually, we are changing what everyone else is trying to say they're doing, but yeah. we're actually delivering yeah. solutions to do it. So by putting every fighting to get every single blue chip company on the blockchain, a public opinion pushing it means child labor going to be differently. Mm -hmm. You know, they need to show cause that they haven't, you know, abused, not used the wrong factory, using the right material, made sure that they've gone through the right value chain, checked up and, and, and delivered to the market in the right way. And when it's out of fashion, not burn it, reuse it. Mm 
yeah, go, yeah, 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 yeah. That code will be on the blockchain. What happened? No, I Stop, gave please. it to people that is needed. We sent it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, let's like, look at all the people. We, we're buying so much stuff. We're wasting it and we throw it. In. And yeah. past fashion wouldn't exist in this world. I'd love to know just how many masks were made and thrown away and where they ended up. Trillions, trillions, and they're all on beaches, beautiful beaches somewhere in piles, like the world. miles of plastic in the ocean, you know. Yeah. But by tokenizing the world, mm. this is what we really do. It makes yeah. it comfortable. We make it change, and we do it for the good, and we do it for the world. And we're fighting for the world. I think a huge aspect of that, if anybody's listening, that it sparks ideas is also fraud, right? Like Bacardi had told a, a colleague of mine that, you know, bars empty out their bottles and then they fill it full of a cheaper liquor and then they sell it as Bacardi, right? They were like, we would pay somebody, we lose, I can't remember what the number was, but I want to say it was like 16 million a year. Like, can you imagine what they pay for a blockchain that would verify that it's actually what they packaged and shipped and right and sold and that's what they're actually selling? Like, yeah. So if, there's a lot of different use cases, but I think yeah, that's a, a very important as well. Expensive watches, they will have same factory, will have their line and is this exactly the same watch. Uh, but one is like fake because it's not actually, it's someone that took a line out of it and sold it in the black market. But mm. as soon as that connected to uh, chain uh, on the blockchain, uh, tokenized, it will be, you know, irrelevant because you can't sell that product. As a way of upholding law in such a way that the police have to go and investigate and they can't say we don't have the resources mm. to do this, you know. That's, but that's because... different. The, the, utility, the execution of it is very different, but the, the, the ability is there. Yeah, the proof, of work, the proof of work is there, the proof of fraud is there, the proof yeah. of everything else is there so if you can present that then you've done half of a job for them anyway all you've got to then do is just and we can you know, do so much good about it people think they can hide behind the cryptocurrency the criminals believe that they can do money laundering they can't no, they it's can't. the worst place if you really understand this you know it's the, the opposite place, yeah the worst place you would put any money on it would be on a blockchain because yeah. one day you can you know that will be discovered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. so just to change something slightly, Chris, how many hours a night do you sleep then? If you're, if you're talking, <laughs> he's Craig. like Craig. I, I'm betting he's just like oh. Craig. Uh, do you sleep in late or what? No, no, no. I, I try to. So that depends on. I mean, I was um, working to eight a.m. You know, the other night, and then seven thirty last night. So when I do that, like late night, I will then. I'll try to get four hours. I called it. <laughs> four, four, four. Most creative ideas apparently happen at three o'clock in the morning, and that's yeah. also apparently My supposed to be the witching I hour, if you believe I, it. But, you know. I load this time of the day because it's actually... Quiet, know, peace. Yeah, peace and you can start thinking, and it's so important to remove you and zoom in and out of your life and having the ability to not just stay in your life but zoom out and get perspective mm -hmm. because the only way... And look at what we do. We work with details, you know, this wallet with the numbers yeah. and everything. At the same time, when we zoom out, we see this, wow, we can impact the world, we can change it. Mm -hmm. But that needs ability to zoom in and out. Mm -hmm. It's understanding the technology, but also how to use it in mm -hmm. a bigger perspective and for the better. Mm -hmm. Now, Kelvin always says, well, he doesn't always say, but I know Kelvin said this a few times, that BSV will absorb all other blockchains. And eat the world. I, His term is eat yeah. the world. I <laughs> just wondered, yeah, I just wondered how long do you think this may take and what's your take on that statement? So, no, so, so we, let's go back to that statement. If you look at the, the different type of industries we've seen, uh, when it comes to the cell phone, we saw, uh, at least I saw, uh, you're much younger than me, uh, but <laughs> Nokia and uh, those was like big companies, Nokia, Ericsson, Sony on mobile phones. They just died. They were, you know, yeah. market cap, like the biggest know, yeah. in the world. Oh, and just, yeah. and, and, and Nokia um, were the first people to actually yeah, send packets, too, packets, of, packets of sound. 
over a mobile communications network. And I, you actually know that uh, Apple, for actually dealing with sounds over the cell phone, they pay, pay license to Ericsson. Ah, no. okay. They, they tried to challenge that. They stopped paying. And there was a court case in Texas. And they are uh, had to pay. So yeah. this is also uh, the world of telecom, just like uh, um, Apple is fighting Samsung. Uh, yeah. and you have all these type of patents in, you know, you have that everywhere. It's just that we don't see them. Uh, when we're using the product. So as a yeah. consumer, we don't see what's happening behind the scenes. Do you mm. know about Bitcoin phone? Have you heard of Bitcoin phone? <laughs> Add that um, one to the list. No, but I. So what I really want to do, if you uh, look at it, I want to, so if, if you see that industry, it consolidated. It ended mm. up in iOS and Android. Mm. And it was not one, take it all. I think that I believe in the global uh, public ledger. I believe that we can absorb and consolidate this market into one. And I think that's the way the world will work most efficiently. Uh, so I believe in that. I believe that that is doable. Uh, and um, also all the other uh, smart contract platforms, they are infringing our patent. They can't scale, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But yes, I believe that you will see uh, one or two operating systems, just like in the cell phone industry, it takes some time, but over, you know, if you look at the perspective to five to 10 years from now, yeah, we will see one global public ledger. That's quite a short time span. Yeah. yeah. It is global. And you just look at all of these, uh, you know, communities. I mean, I started recruiting people now from, uh, I just uh, recruited someone from the Algorand community <laughs> uh, without uh, mentioning her name. Uh, uh, super smart uh, woman, um, you know, uh, notoriety within that community, and uh, just like convincing them to, to, you know, look at this, and then, well, get excited, and then you know, an algorithm seems like you know one of the better one, I would say. Uh, I did the same one with a guy in music uh, in Atlanta. Uh, you saw that? <laughs> yeah, he was really yeah. excited after he came off that call. You know, I like that. So creative guy, big influencer in those uh, things and has great ideas. But people don't like people with great ideas. They want <laughs> to suppress them. They want to push yeah. them down. Let's quiet yeah. them up. Much easier. Yeah. Because the interest in this world is just like Jack Dorsey, Twitter, uh, the former Twitter uh, guy. And, and um, uh, you know, Facebook, I mean, they're dead companies if they don't modernize themselves. Mm -hmm. And what we want is empowering the people. So if you go onto social media and you are engaging, yeah. So if you are someone that is engaging, you're spending your time, you monetize your data. It's a natural thing, mm -hmm. but it needs to be deployed. It needs to have an audience. So mm -hmm. think about, you know, Elon uh, um, doing a vote. And he did a voting for Donald Trump in or out of Twitter. Yeah, yeah. 53 million people voting. And mm -hmm. if that was really someone on the social media getting paid for that entertainment for all other people, yeah, he would become, you know, a multi millionaire yeah. dollar. I Just wish he'd reinstate my account. <laughs> what? I wish he'd reinstate my original account. Now, all that will go to hand cash, you know, in the future. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just yeah. like think about plugging in that into Twitter, you know, just yep. using the same type of technology. So yep. one of our plans is is actually taking and uh, we're building a private equity fund too. Not only VCs doing startups, but actually taking uh, Web two related companies that are Web two, mm -hmm. and and reinvent them, but not going to McKinsey or Bain telling uh, asking for what to do with this company but using technology to change them. So it's like uh, by a company, I just give an example without, it's not a company that is on the list to buy, but as an example that people understand, a DocuSign and turn and make yeah. the model and yeah. use our you know, uh, different type of technology that we have and, and make them relevant in Web3. And we can do that. And we can do that with all that type of company and make them better and do value creation 
and serve the society with better things. Uh, so what, have you got any advice for us then, you know, as women of BSV, Robin, who's over in Miami, Micah, who's over in Germany at the moment, but travels all over the place anyway, you know, I mean, have you got any advice for us within this new kind of space, this web free space, how we can improve what we're doing, how we can monetize what we're doing, you know, or any anything that you think. How we can reach the, out more outside of. Yeah the BSV community. So, so I think that's all about uh, marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can't do marketing because marketing costs money. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I can offer you as an experiment to just see how that works. Uh, you, if you put up a special uh, show, uh, uh, just, uh, just talking to the audience of women, what I will then do about blockchain, and you take it into a general term, I will distribute that to 750,000 uh, women in Scandinavia. Oh, okay. so I want you to do a show mm -hmm. that actually is talking about the importance of onboarding women into the society and generalize it. You can talk about BSV, but talk about the industry. So... Uh, I think that the smartest way to get onboarded and get a bigger fan base is also add on an element of um, the broader uh, scope of the understanding of blockchain. Mm -hmm. And then you educate them and you bring them into this. We can do that as a, as a test. Brilliant. Well, I mean, Diddy just did well, a call well, to Exeter FinTech students a couple of weeks ago. Um, yes, yeah, so just to elaborate on my my fintech talk yeah i mean we, more we, interesting but um we, we yeah we'll do it we'll do it so, so what, what, what i can do it i can do it for you know uh, we have approximately one and a half million students in sweden uh, and i want to just try it there and we can then segment that into interest groups etc but just like see talk to them and i think it's important to rec recruit more women into the industry first of all i think that Maybe I shouldn't say this, but but uh, I say it. I think that uh, women are much more responsible than men, and I think they take a bigger, you know, uh, <laughs> I think they take a bigger um, social responsibility in society, yeah. uh, and I think uh, uh, that's why it's important to talk about this. And uh, uh, for me, I think two. There's not enough people talking about the social impact of what you are doing. Yeah. And I think that that's the way you will attract more audience. So if I were you, I will actually focus that and then you have solutions. Because one thing is going out and say, oh, we need to change the world. But you have no solution. It's very easy to come up and say, this is the problem, but I don't have the solution. You have both identified, you know, the problem and you have a solution. So I would approach it like uh, um, you are fighting for this planet. And, 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 and really, that's what we're doing. But that's also a way of communicating. So we are redoing our website on Enchain uh, to four different uh, you know, groups. One B2C, one Enterprise Governance Solutions, and one Licensing, and one Venture, which is like all the use cases. Uh, but one of the things and key uh, themes that I want to talk about is how we impact the world. So I have, uh, you know, friends that do social impact fund uh, or have private equity funds. And there are stars in their industry. They're really, really good. And um, I asked him, um, so what do you do in the web free area? Mm -hmm. um, mm, I haven't really thought about it that uh but how can you be relevant as a social impact private equity fund if you're not in that space mm -hmm. because you can't well, yeah yeah it's mm -hmm. impossible to own they buy old company but they they don't try to move them they try to do changes and they try to definitely do good and they are the best in the industry but transparency is a very 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 important part yeah so Transparency when it comes to diamonds, what is blood diamonds? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's really ir irrelevant. All of those things you should start and look at and uh, kind of 
if I were you, make a list, create create a yeah. book, a small book, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 because you know tapped into this industry so much that you can write down, uh, you know, uh, a small book about example on how this technology is changing everything. That's how you educate. That's a very very bloody good idea, Kristen. We'll do that. Yeah, we can yeah. do that. I would love to help you. Mm, good. Yeah, no, that, that sounds like a fantastic idea. Something I've been kind of thinking about doing on and off for years, but I've not got yeah, But if you do that, because, I mean, and you can do it the way, what you do is that you actually take, uh, I would also, uh, uh, in your show, take people and thought leaders that actually work with changes and social impact. And so what do you do? And start the dialogue. Yeah, but what about this? Have you thought about this? And you can actually then interview different people. And then you take those interviews. You summarize what's happening there. Because you talk about this all the time. So mm. you can use some of your content. Mm. And probably go through the 71 interviews you had. And take whatever is relevant. And put it together. Mm. And it's then a really you can... Good idea. It's all up yeah. here. It just needs then to be... And you can, you can clip... Down. Yeah. Take the best clips you see from what you have, edit that into its own program mm -hmm. and spread it out. Documentary Diddy. Diddy's the editor. And you know the woman <laughs> Just of DSP. Documentary. I'm like you though, Kristen. I like I I stay up till like three, four four o'clock or five o'clock in the morning. I'm like like, you know, big bags under my eyes and stuff and get about <laughs> But you know what I, I believe when you're working with things that is exciting, um actually you know in your heart that you're really working with things that will change the world mm. and the way we're operating this world. Mm. When you do that, uh, uh, you kind of get energy. So you, it's yeah. difficult to get, you get That's tired. Right. You need, so you need, you need, you need, 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 you need, yeah. but you well, get yeah. endless stimulated. It's not enough I mean, hours in the day sometimes, to be honest with you. What? There's not enough hours in the day sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But we're so, all very lucky. We live in such an exciting life, in such exciting I mean, we do. Life. It's so exciting. I, so I had a meeting, you know, a couple of weeks ago with a very interesting company uh, that I really want to do something with. And it's called Pocket. And they have 750,000 people in UK uh, onboarded onto their um, platform, which is like a payment, uh, you know, uh, uh, solution. Um which of course should have nano payment and all that, but they really are onboarding, you know, uh, and they have a, a debit card for semi unbanked people, like people that doesn't have the same means. And we were discussing, but what's, what is the most important if you're going to make a difference for people's life today is understanding that people have difficulty paying their electricity bill and their food mm -hmm. bill and all that. Mm -hmm. And when you have all those people, you negotiate on their behalf and you give them, you know, a better deal with this and better deal with this. And you can make sure that they can do microtransactions. And a lot of the people living overseas, so you make sure it's all their families and they want to send money back home. And we make that cheaper. And yeah. we, so in principle, let's take what you have and go web free with it. And, and we plug in our technology and we do it together and we spread it out because you already done 750,000 people and they're happy with your services. But you're going to die if you're not going web free. You're going to die yeah. if you're not able to do nano transactions. And yeah. everyone that tried the nano transactions understand that what? I can use that for everything. Take a yeah. newspaper, a newspaper that exists in the UK. Or I'll give an example. I want to read a Swedish newspaper. I need to have a Swedish cell phone. I can't get the subscription. There are 80,000 people living in uh, UK uh, that they don't tap into because you need to have a registered address in Sweden to get the subscription. Oh my so God. Yeah. you want to it through micropayment for articles. Uh, we can plug that in straight away. We have- I know, I know. it could be done tomorrow, exactly. Yeah. And, we, and we disrupt the whole yeah. industry of media. Not only that, you put the truth and on on um, uh, and the fake news you put on the blockchain. So everyone talking about fake news, yeah. But let's look at the source. Yeah. Traceable goes straight back to the uh, source. So you put the source there. Sorry, and everyone 
Every single journalist needs to be show the show source. Everyone relevant, you're on social media. Show the source. I don't think it's okay to be on a social media without an ID. I stand up with your name. If you can't stand up with your name, don't even go there. Yeah. You shouldn't even be low there. Mm. Because mm. we can onboard all of this so easy with digital identity. It's so easy. Let people be responsible. And that's what we're fighting for. I give an example of what I did the other day. So, uh, you know, being in the office, looking at what we have, blah, 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 blah. And then I see, wow. And uh, I talked to this amazing guy we have in Slovenian. Roman is his name. Mm-hmm. And I had a chat with him. And uh, he said, hey, we, you know, we have this software. Um, or, you know, solution for responsible gambling. And we built that on Kenzie. Uh, it's a product. And we have some client, but, you know, there was no real interest in the sales department to sell this. And uh, we don't really know what to do, but it, it has potential. Of course it has potential. You know, you go to regulation authority, all these gambling companies that get fined and all the abuse that is happening there, you know, and, and, and because they know that they are abusing these gamblers that they take the money from or the VIP clients, etc. So I want, so then I put them together with a CRM, some, some partners of me, uh, uh, a CRM solution that have the gambling industry. I said, responsible gambling, let's plug it in there. And now they're working on a project where we take our responsible gambling and their web two, but they're cutting edge in the web two CRM solutions and just plug it in there and then push it out to the audience, then you go to the regulators and say, there is a solution. Yeah. So, and that's the way we need to work with regulation. We embrace regulation. Please regulate this market. Get rid of all the crap, all the FTX, all the Binance, all the shit. I don't have one exchange. We don't we need to see it. what's left when all that falls and fails. We, we will see fall and fail. Yeah. And please regulate it. We want that regulation to come. Absolutely. It's wonderful that we've now got a big picture guy like you who's got loads and loads of contacts, loads and loads of energy, is like, you know, forward-looking, friendly, talks to people all day long and all night by the sound of it. (laughs) This is is what we've been missing, I think. You are the missing link. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, and you are a very important part of this. And for me, it's a, a, an honor to be on your show. And I want to help if there is a way for reaching out to more women like you yeah. to discover actually what you're doing for this planet. That's why I, I, if I were you, yeah, yeah. I would add that on because I know from your heart, that's where you are. We this are. Is, we're, we're activists, all of us. We really are activists. But yeah. you already have all this in your mind. Yeah. That this we is that solution, but you don't communicate yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That's mm. the difference. Because that's obvious for you all. You yeah. know it is like that. But that doesn't mean that everyone else that you communicated with understand that. So I'll put that more on the agenda because you're doing so much good. I mean, a book would be great, but I mean, even a website that's... Sort of well, no, a web, website is very, you know, website, yeah. but even just add it more into your show and actually invite some of these, you know, uh, influencers in the space of, uh, you know, take, um, uh, what's her name? Greta Thunberg. <laughs> you know, like, I wouldn't know how to contact her, but yeah. What's well, on Twitter? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but what, what I mean is that her or whatever, yeah, yeah. she has no solutions. She just wants to fight for this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she she's got the passion and the belief to, and yes, and literally believe. she she's fighting for her life too, and she believes that it's her life that's at risk if she doesn't. Yes, and and, and she yeah, she's believer that out there. in that, and she fights for it. And we have all different tools and different way of fighting for it. So you yeah. probably... we're not going to sit in the middle of the road or throw baked beans at, uh, with us. No, no. What? no. We're not what? going to sit in the middle of the road or throw baked beans at, at artworks. Like we're going to make apps and solutions. Yeah, but, but that's what we are all about. Yeah. That's what we are all about. Yeah. And 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 uh, again, we coming from the solution side, 
we're looking at the solutions, how to actually bring some value, like you, you're talking about getting the creators, reaching the market more efficiently, but it's like fashion, let's get all the bullshit away. Let not have this waste society of overspending consumptions. And the sick thing is this world is that we're all talking about uh, uh, um, rescuing the planet, but at the same time, when uh, consumption go down, you know, go make it desperate. Mm -hmm. What do they do? Yeah, deflation terrifies them. Yeah, but you, 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 we're terrified. Oh, we're not buying enough. Let's stimulate the economy. Stimulate for you know destroying the planet. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're doing? Well, there won't be any economy if there's no planet, is there? You know, it's as simple as that, isn't it? You know, so I mean, I think, we need you know, solutions like well, getting rid of the plastic in the middle of the ocean. And, and like you say, all the masks that were worn during COVID, what is going to happen to all of those? That, you know? But the real problem is the fact that money's created as debt at the moment. So, I mean, yeah. Bitcoin's even a solution to that problem. Yeah. The, the constant the, printing of money. Yeah. Take that dialogue because it like, there are solutions out there. There's technology that solves a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. And if you are activating the public opinion, you will get more people to be aware because that's the way you push the blue chip companies to go on these solutions. Do you think a board of H&M uh, or Zara or you know, a fashion company, let's say a fast fashion company, uh, ASOS or whatever, you know, do you think they... They really want to change that model. No. They, they, no, they, 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 they companies like LVMH is much more sustainable because you can reuse. I believe in the whole reuse market uh, that a product gonna last long and it's gonna be reused again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And that's why the secondary market and no one taking the secondary market serious and the secondary market, no one consolidated that. If you had that secondary market on all luxury product or all you know bags or everything, suddenly you know you are proud of moving it on, and you see yeah. that in these vintage uh, vintage uh, stores yeah, yeah. that are proud of you know selling the That's secondary happy. goods. Absolutely, yeah. Let's make that even more you know uh, exciting, because then we are actually doing something good, and this is technology. Well, this is it. I mean, you could have a voucher system where every time somebody resells a garment or whatever, they they earn some points. I mean, it's, it's yeah, all you know, there's, all kind of yeah. you, there's so many ways of doing it. So if if you were LVMH, I would say that you know you sell this once. If you're gonna increase your ESG score, you're gonna sell this product ten times. You prove that you actually created the product that lost. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's not sitting in a landfill or in the ocean at the moment yeah 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 Precisely. so yeah. when you're a fast fashion company oh i'm gonna have that dress for that moment and you use it for one time mm. because a lot of those companies yeah, like, i mean like for primark for example you buy an item of clothing from there and then the stitching falls apart it's, after it's about the fourth time, time you've worn it anyway yeah. <laughs> you know they are terrible and then, so, and then what do you do with it? Uh, you know, uh, it's a well, I sew them back together personally, but there you go. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, but you know, you're different. So, but you know, we're talking about the masses here. And, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's all about, uh, I, I normally say there's 7,700 languages. And, and we should remember then when we, we're listening and the audience is listening to us later on. Mm -hmm. There's 7,700 languages out there, 4,400 is dying. And when we are now talking as a group of six people, uh, we're talking, we are leveling in on a tribe language. Uh, so even if we speak English, uh, we are from different jurisdictions, we speak English, and someone else on the table next to us or going to listen to us, they wouldn't even understand what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And that's something to remember when yeah. we are talking about BSV, Bitcoin, and all that, we need to educate yeah, we'll that quite keenly <laughs> because we need to broaden the so small world. and our voice is so small and it needs to be bigger. We need to grow it. And my ambition is to grow it to a global movement. Mm -hmm. And that's why these show, you know, use cases and what you can do and just talk about how these things can change things. Mm-hmm.
That's why we create public opinion that uh, companies like uh, H&M, they need to be on blockchain. I want to force them onto blockchain <laughs> because I know they're using factories there. Somebody mention them to their list because he's mentioned it at least four times. Somebody target that one. Well, it's because they are one of the world's biggest. And you can say, sorry. Why, why do they burn clothes, Kristen? I need to know this. No, because actually I had a venture company that actually they opened my eyes. And, and they, they showed me statistic and how much clothes that was burned. From Why did they burn them? I don't understand. Well, they burn it because market. You know, that, that's interesting. So as soon as that collection has gone out and we tried to dump it, mm -hmm. there is clothes left in the warehouse. Yeah. What should I do about it? I can't store it. I will never be able to sell oh, it. Oh, because it costs money to store it? Okay. So they don't wow. Do that, but they wow. don't want to free is they want people to have to buy the new stuff, like. But, but there's plenty of things you could do with it, like donate it wow. to people. Who oh, don't no, I agree. I mean, technology companies do the same. You know, they'd rather yeah. they throw things yeah. in the yeah. skip. Than, the same uh, with food, um, food companies, McDonald's and places yeah. like that. Instead of actually donating that food to homeless shelters, they will throw it in, in the bin because yeah. of regulation. The, yeah. Yeah, we want so regulation, but there are also parts and parcels that are actually really detrimental to society, which actually could do really good use. And some, society. Companies actually, some companies actually do it and they open up and what we haven't sold out actually we are giving them to, you know, you can come and pick it up. Like, you know, there is some company that does it, but yeah. not on big scale. And yeah. I was us to be, you know, a catalyst. And certainly not the primary manufacturer, right? Like a manufacturer has an entire whole, whole market and revenue stream that they haven't realized, right? Imagine if, to your point, like Louis Vuitton or whoever could say, say that, yes, they're lowering their ESG score. They're also just created X amount more revenue, right? They also created more... Um, branding and, and want and appeal from all of that. There's like multiple facets of that. And so if we educate it, we can create public opinion for people to actually demand. I want to see a label that is tracked. And if it's not tracked, it's not relevant. You shouldn't right. buy it because you are not as a human being responsible. Yeah. And we can fight for that. And we can create that movement. And that's the movement I want to create. That's what I love about BSV. It attracts moral people. <laughs> you know, it, it, it attracts people that want to change the world for the better. That's and right. that's why I get, I get so angry when I see how hurt and attacked uh, Craig is. Mm -hmm. When I know who he is. And I yep. know how much he fights for a different world. It's just that his brain is on, not leveled into normal people. No. It means that the, the way he can communicate is very complicated for people that don't get it. To even understand. if he communicates in the most simple way, he says something well, that even those of us that understand it the most, like three years later, go, oh. Uh, that's <laughs> okay. what he, you have your aha like, moment, right? It, so this is what he's been saying in, in the industry, you know, uh, all these scam exchanges, they're going to fall. Yeah. And you know what? Is, is there anyone giving him that credit today? Is there any newspaper said yeah, this is what Dr. Craig Wright said, you know, a number of years ago? This is all no, but, Well, yeah. no, because no, we're going back to I start listening because he's, again, screamed it from rooftops for years, along with Calvin and, and the group. He knew it going to happen. Yeah. And it's see, inevitable. Yeah. Mm. Because he has the ability for pattern recognition. So he mm. sees things differently and he sees what's wrong and that's why he knew that that was going to happen and that's why when we are fighting this cause we are fighting for something better and i want to fight that cause and i don't care what people think because i know it's the right thing to do and if i'm, I'm pass away doing it yeah <laughs> I did something. yeah i think we're all gonna die on that sword <laughs> <laughs> No, we're gonna not tell you. I know what we're gonna make this happen. Well, we're gonna, happen. yeah, keep manifesting, and magical things well, will happen. All right, willing to die on that sword. Let me adjust that comment. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're doing it. We're making it. We're in it for the long haul. We yeah. are. We are. Yeah. And you know what? And that's what it is. This is not like a short term game. It's just like step by step, moving people yeah. to understand how important this thing is.
and we're going to get that. And I'm 100% convinced that we're going to win that game. Good. Well, we should probably wrap it up because we've been talking for two hours. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Love the conversation. If you uh, want to stay for a bit longer, please do. I'm sure we've got plenty of things. So I can't open. wait. I'm dying to ask this question, Kristen. Um, so what is in-chain group versus in-chain? And forgive me if it was already discussed. What? What? What is in-chain group versus in-chain? What, what's the group comprised of? And how many offices well, are you hoping to open? So my role is very simple. I'm running Enchain, and, and uh, that means Enchain Group is the holding company, but it's really uh, I run that group, and uh, I'm going to put in completely new direction in how we're going to do and implement that. And we put together a new strategy, which is approved by that board and approved by, so we are in principle, I would say, five important uh, stakeholders in the whole movement of where we are uh, running. Uh, this group is like uh, Craig, of course. Uh, it is Calvin, of course, that's finding it. It's, 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 it's also Calvin's family office that is backing everything around that. Okay. And it's Stefan. And, yep. and uh, uh, we are very aligned that we need to change the way we've been doing it in the past. And we're going to be much more inclusive. We're going to follow this strategy and uh, we're going to do it and we're going to make it. That's awesome. Okay. So congratulations on your new office in Manila. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Are you, it, yes. Are you anticipating other in-chain offices? Is that on the map yet or? No, no, I will go and visit every office. So, uh, and we will expand. And, yeah. uh, but this, this is a global movement. And Good. Manila is important because uh, they are very, you know, all of these emerging markets are extremely adoptable. Yeah. Uh, they adopt for new technology faster than anyone else. Yeah, uh, yeah. They have the infrastructure and yeah. uh, they are very blockchain focused. And we believe that there's a huge opportunity to do better when it comes, especially, you know, down to nano payments and uh, solutions for, you know, uh, uh, unbanked in all these yeah. emerging market is uh, in Africa too. The only thing I think in yeah. Africa is very much China is also they build a lot of infrastructure. There. We'll see how we're doing it, but we are a global company and we're going to touch points everywhere in the world. That makes a lot more sense. I didn't really understand why Manila and why they're pushing the kind of. I, don't, I would. I saw it as branding the Philippines as a new blockchain hub, but now that makes more sense because actually it's very, it's, it's it's a very adoptable, very yeah. uh, advanced that and huge population. But we're going to mm. do the same in India. We're going to do the same, you know, everywhere. Well, so. Craig has said recently uh, over the last I don't know how long, but recently he said very much uh, or many times that he wants to see like the forests. 5 billion people like uh, onboarded, right? So it makes sense to start in those kinds of markets. Like you said, if you had the phone, as long as they have a smartphone, they have access and they can be onboarded uh, and, and they have economic opportunity at their fingertips. And you need to tap into a group where you have audience. So you go to India, you know how many fans or cricketers in India? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. people. Yeah. 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 Well, if they distributed your show to 600 million fans, mm. Yeah. How fast yeah. we're able to actually reach out in the market. Yeah. That's what we're doing. And that's what do we're know, doing. Do you know Rohan? No. At all? Because no. he's one of the top five um BSV developers in in India. I think he was top five. Yeah, I heard about the, I heard about yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he opened the Citadel India and he uh, is working on some really smart payment systems as well. Yeah, he's, he's building as well. He's a developer for, for one of the women of BSV, who is Laura, and she and her husband, Igwe, have built a um, like a micropayment um, consulting kind of, what is it? It's a consulting like a app almost, charged by the minute sort of. Yeah, so it's like micro 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 consulting. Uh, it's kind of like Calendly ma matches. Um, what was that old app called? I can't think of the word of, word of it right now. But you click on like if I want to go on Diddy's calendar, I'm gonna put myself on her calendar. I'm gonna pay for her time. I know upfront what she charges for her consulting time, and it pays to the wallet right there, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of what it does. Clarity FM. The other app is called Clarity FM. Oh, there's Dimely, wasn't there as well? Yeah. Yeah. I'd be happy if someone can put me in contact with him. 
We will. Yeah. And, and, and we'll awesome. show you those apps too, because they're, they've got great utility. Yeah, she's rebranding at the moment, but she's a wife, she's a mother, she's uh, an entrepreneur. She did a master's in um, cybersecurity on Bitcoin. Oh, as wow. And they were the first cohort graduates the- of the dojo as well. Yeah, they were at the dojo, yeah. She's a lovely, lovely woman. And you, you'd really like her, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I would love to meet. They're there in London. You'll definitely meet them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, well, no, no, I, I, like I said, I'm, uh, I, I meet as many use cases as uh, possible. I already met 50 and, and I, I already, you know, tap and, into and just it. pushing them together. Like some of these things would work so brilliantly with other things yeah. and they just don't even know it yet. Like, so just even that interconnectivity, like. Oh. I agree. It's important. Yes. Yeah. So will you be at the Global Blockchain Conference in London in no, May? I, and I get June. You, I'm going to be a speaker there. Brilliant. Marvelous! We're going to be there. You should come and join our stage as well. We're going to on day one. So. Okay. Brilliant! Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Likewise, and enjoy, your, enjoy your weekend. And so nice to speak to you. And I'm so happy that we have this type of you know you representing BSV. Good. And we will we will get something together. We'll we'll get something little book kind of leaflet yeah. kind of thing together and we'll throw it in your direction and see yeah. see if oh, you yeah, can I'm speak back anything that, for I'm, it. I'm I think that's so cool if we can do something like that. And branded up uh, women of BSV because it, you yeah. know that, that delivers the message as well. Mm. Itself. It does. Yeah. I think that's the, you know, I, I think you, to put together something like that, I mean that's something and we can maybe uh, help to sponsor a uh, ghostwriter if you don't have time. Yes, yes, we'll, yes, we'll, we'll take you up on that. We, we, we've got, <laughs> no, 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 because I mean, we've got an AI on there. We can do that. You know, what, you know an AI. Can, but I, I, but I, I really mean that because this is like get it done there, and you just yeah. like instead of actually sitting and doing all that same, you have the you know the same, you have the narrative, you know the stories. And and you talk to someone and they try. And then they write it down. Yeah. And again, yeah, go on, it's, 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 the most important thing is they don't. Yeah. Throw some information in our direction. We are limited on resources, so that'd be uh, quite amazing. And that's why it's, you know you have to find ways of doing it more efficiently. Yeah, exactly. That's a more efficient, faster way. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so. Oh, much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Likewise. It's been an amazing Likewise. conversation. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye. Namaste.